Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter by updating my last video, which was about the DJI Osmo Action, updating a few elements that you pointed out in the comments had been corrected by firmware updates, and going over the conclusion of that video as well. So I wanted to share the change log between that alpha video for you and this beta review. I wanted to go over those updates, but first explain how those errors got in the video in the first place. The main reason is really that I sat on that footage for a long time, which is something that I never do. This was the first video that I had done that. I had shot all that footage and taken all of these notes months ago. So I had this footage and then I went on this long trip through India, Pakistan, Nepal, and I prioritized putting out those travel videos and then put off this tech video for a long time and too long. So I realized that since those firmware updates have come out, since I had the Osmo in my hand, which I can't get back to my hands right now because I'm in a real strict lockdown. So I can't get the Osmo action in my hand like I normally would just get another Osmo action and then update the review. So then I'd put those together, but right now I can't. And it really just comes down to this video needing an update because parts of it were outdated. A lot of it though isn't, and I'll go over those parts as well, but first some of the corrections. So one of my main issues with the DJI Osmo Action at the time was that you couldn't flip the screen around when you're recording. So if you're using the back screen and you're recording and then you wanted to switch around and film yourself, it wasn't possible with an earlier firmware version to flip the screen around so that you could use the front facing screen while you were recording. That has been fixed in a recent firmware update so you can now switch the screens between filming from the back to the front as you're recording. Another thing I brought up was that it would be nice if there was a hardware switch to do that change instead of the double tap on the screen on the back. And now you can use the quick shot screen with the double tap to flip the screens around as well. I also pointed out when you were using Rocksteady, which is the Osmo stabilization feature, that you would get this kind of weird lag between what you were recording and what you were seeing on the screen. That has also been fixed with the firmware update, so you no longer have that lag. And now it's extremely minimal from what I've seen. Another issue I had was with the timeouts of the screens on the front and the back, and now you have options to do those as well, all included with firmware updates that have happened multiple times since the DJI Osmo Action was released. In addition to those firmware fixes, you've also got some new features as well in the Osmo Action with firmware updates, and those are using Hyperlapse, for example. You can now also live stream with the DJI Osmo Action, and all the other things that I said in that review still hold true to a large extent. It's still an extremely durable camera. I'm still very impressed by the exterior of the DJI Osmo Action and its ability to handle just wear and tear physically. The hard matte plastic on the outside is really resistant against scratches. It's very durable and this feels like a very reliable product and I had no reliability issues while I was using the Osmo Action and I really put it through its paces in terms of travel and use. And having the front facing screen is still great. It's being able to see yourself, especially if you're vlogging, is important when you want to frame yourself. Even if you can't see every little detail, it is still nice to be able to see where you sit in the frame to make sure that you are recording the things that you want to be recording. You can't do that with a lot of competing devices that don't have a front screen. So you don't ever really know if you're actually in the screen or not, especially if you're kind of moving around or adjusting the frame as you go. That said, the field of view is still tighter on the Osmo Action than it is on other action cameras. And I personally like that, like I mentioned in that video in the beginning, but everybody might not like that video. You might want that fisheye, that sort of much wider frame of view. You might want that on your action camera. And that's still something that DJI can't fix with a firmware update. That's a physical limitation of the device. The microphone is still so-so, even though there have been some optimizations made with the firmware update but that's pretty much true of any action camera. The photos are still pretty decent, I think. They're not great, but again, this is an action camera. It's not gonna be your main photography camera for most people, but the low light photography and the low light videos, I still think are excellent. It still does a really good job of capturing those sort of darker areas, especially when you're indoors. So if you want an action camera that's really good in low light, I think the DJI Osmo Action really does excel in this area. The Rocksteady stabilization feature is implemented very well and it's still great even with these little firmware tweaks. It only gets better and better and better. But all of those updates still hold true to the original conclusion that I came to in my previous video. And that was this is still a work in progress. It's not a fully baked product quite yet. And that's what you expect with the first generation product. So in a first generation product, you're going to get what a company is ideally looking for and what the customers are looking for and the actual product. You're gonna get these big jumps 
with updates over time, especially between the first gen and the second gen, and then the third gen, it's gonna get a little bit smaller, and then the fourth gen, and then the fifth gen, and then it becomes more of a refinement and companies don't make these big jumps. You still have the advantages to being a first gen product, being an alpha product, and that means you're going to get a lot of frequent updates and DJI has done a great job at that. They've not left the Osmo action just hanging out there. They fixed a lot of the issues that I brought up in the video and that people were experiencing, which is really good on them. And it really bodes well for the updates you're going to get in the future. Updating the firmware is easy enough through the DJI app, but most people, most users are not going to go into the firmware settings and update them. I don't think most casual users are going to be firmware updating a lot. So what you get out of the box is probably what you're going to end up just using. You and I may update the firmware, but the most casual users probably aren't and they probably don't want to. And that's what it means to get a first gen product is you're going to get these frequent updates which is great if you're a first adopter which is what i said in the previous video and that's great you're going to get the cutting edge of features from dji you're going to get those software updates very frequently you're going to get the front and the back screen you've got all these great features on the cutting edge but a lot of people don't really want that they want a product that's fully baked that's going to get no updates or they're not even going to know that they're going to be able to firmware update their device so for those people it's probably still better to get an older competing product at the same or lower cost. So it really depends on two types of users. I think the DJI Osmo Action now is getting a lot closer to the ideal that DJI had realized when they put this product out. Using users feedback like I got in the comments, a lot of people are now realizing that the DJI Osmo Action is still a much, much, much better camera now than it was before just a couple of months ago. If you're somebody who wants that front facing screen and you're somebody who doesn't mind making frequent firmware updates, then the DJI Osmo Action is still a really good choice for you. That's what I said in the original video. I didn't say this was a bad camera. I just said it's a camera for a different type of user than maybe somebody who's just a casual user and just wants an action camera for their dash or something like that. So there you have it. That's my change log from that first video and this beta update to that review. Thanks very much to all of you who mentioned that in the comments. That's one of the things I like about making these tech videos is it's sort of a collaborative effort that I can be wrong and you can help correct me in the comments. But sitting on that footage for that long is something that I'm just never going to do again because obviously too much can change in too short of a time and it's going to lead to a review that needs a frequent update and that's the same thing with beta and alpha updates some people want those frequent updates and others they just want to get one thing and they're done if you're still watching at this point thanks very much make sure you hit the like and the subscribe buttons down below i'll have new videos for you every week thanks again for watching and i will see you in the next video